Run over. <laughs>
Do you see what a shaft with the steering wheel? <laughs> proper driving. I can tell already. already. <laughs> I can yeah. tell already. You're going to get nowhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the the mini? Was here. You're not even going to beat the mini. Oh, not bad. Oh, not bad. That's, not bad. It's, it's beating the mini. Come on. I don't want to run over the cone. You're not run over the cone. Okay, well, Mark. I this. want to run over you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Okay, so that's science. Honda Fiat Mini. Let's do a proper scientific test. Next up, drag race. Oh, that's <laughs> more like it. But those dummies are coming out. So we lined up on the runway for a three-way face-off. And after Tiff had evicted his passengers, sorry to have to do this, but we were ready to race. So the Mini might have lost the turning circle. I don't really care about that, to be honest. But the reality is it's going to absolutely monster those other cars in a drag race because that 135 kilowatt motor equates to 184 horsepower. And this has a 0 to 62 time of 7.2 seconds. So I'm going to knock it into sport mode, keep the heated seats on, put it in park, and then it's just bosh dosh, away we go. So here we are, drag race time. I've got the car set in sport mode. I think I've got a pretty good chance here. We've got rear wheel drive in the Honda, unlike the other two cars, and 0 to 60 is dealt with in 8.3 seconds. So I think Paul, Paul over there looks like he's very confident, but I think this is gonna be a lot closer than he thinks. And now, of course, uh, a bit of a slippery surface today. I don't know who's gonna quite win this. It's all down to the power, and I've got the middle power. I've got an 87 kilowatt motor, which if you multiply by 1.36, gives me 118 horsepower in modern numbers. The Mini's got the most, the Honda's got the least. Let battle commence. Now, admittedly, a drag race might not seem like the most relevant test for these cars, but picture the scene. You're looking for a parking space and suddenly you spot one a quarter of a mile away. But so do the other two drivers. Who's gonna to get to the space first? Three, two, one, go. Not a good start, not a good start. What? That Fiat's doing quite well, I have to say. This Honda's coming back at me. I've got Tiff, I've got Tiff. We're hanging in there now, but it's just not gonna win. There was only gonna be one winner, but who came second? That looked close. I fell asleep in the middle of the race, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was the world's quietest drag race. By the way, Matt, yours is rear wheel drive. Can you see if you can turn the traction control off? Because I've got a little idea. I'll certainly have a look for you, Tiff. So the Honda E can do quite impressive donuts, but if the drag race wasn't a relevant test, then that definitely wasn't relevant. It was time to get the trio of cars out into the real world and see how they performed on the road. I think one of the most surprising things about this Mini is that it actually feels like a Mini. It feels like you're driving a, a normal Mini. And let's be fair, electric isn't quite normal just yet. I know it's going to be a normality in the very, very near future, but this car performs and feels dynamically like, a, like an internal combustion car, like a Mini that we've known and loved for so many years. The way that the power goes down, that instant torque that you have is completely different, of course. And the way that as soon as you lift your foot off the accelerator, the regenerative braking just really pulls you back as well in the seat. You wouldn't get that aggressiveness when you ease off an accelerator in a normal car. But it does handle, it does feel like you're driving just a normal car, even though you've got all this weight of the batteries, the whole car weighs 1,365 kilograms, which for a little hot hatch is not exactly light. But the batteries are laid out in quite a clever way. They're, it's almost like a T on the floor, keeping the low distribution of weight to of course make it a little bit better when handling. So you wouldn't really know if you put it in here blindfolded and had some earmuffs on, you'd probably crash because you wouldn't be able to see where you're going, but you, would, you wouldn't be able to probably tell the difference between this and a normal Cooper S. So whilst this Fiat might be the least powerful of this little trio and lost its drag race, it's certainly very impressive when it comes to range. And there's so much more complicated things about range. The, the, the Honda is 200 kilograms heavier. That's bad for range. But also there's the efficiency of how that power is taken out of your battery storage. The simple fact is with this car, 
87 kilowatts on a 42 kilowatt hour battery. And you're concentrating now. If you went full throttles at an autobahn in Germany at the top speed of 93 miles an hour, you'd use up all of those 42 kilowatts in 30 minutes or so. So you'd literally drive for half an hour to about 45 miles and that would be the end of it. So that's why range is always depending on how you're driving. 199 miles is promised and it's been doing quite well today. You can also have a convertible version, which I really like the look of, uh, but we've got the roof on today. But it's a beautiful looking car. I love the paint job of this, which is an extra thousand pounds actually. So this is a very special, built from the ground up electric car from Fiat. And I'm quite enjoying it. Now, let me just talk to you about the interior of this car because you get so much as standard on the Honda E. So we've got things like the two 12 inch touchscreens in the middle. You've got a feature in there that you can click and do an aquarium only while you're static, obviously. We've got cameras for wing mirrors. They kind of look like Shrek's ears and they can offer up to 50% better visibility than an ordinary wing mirror could. We've got heated seats, we've got a heated windscreen, we've got a really nice sunroof above me. There's cruise control. Actually, it's a real shame that we're not on the motorway right now because we've got level two autonomy. And so too, actually, has the Fiat. However, the Mini doesn't have it. And what level two means is basically, it will do everything for you. So you can pretty much just sit back and relax. Obviously, you still have to be very alert when you're driving, but all you've got to do is keep some pressure points on the steering wheel and the car will do everything else. And that is completely standard on the Honda E. I do really like the design in here as well. I love the look of the dashboard with this wood down here and the wood on the center console. It's so simple and easy to use. It's a very simplistic design in here, but I think it's really retro as well. It's retro modern, I think, is probably the best way that I can describe it. It, it is retro with all of these modern flares, like the big screens and the new wing mirrors and so on. This actually isn't the first ever electric Mini. Mini had a stand at making an electric car 10 or so years ago. They sold it in a few different countries, including America. And it was almost a bit of a forerunner for the i8 and the i3 back in the day. But 10 years on, we've got this, the Mini Electric, which comes in three different levels. You've got level one, two, and three. And the only difference in those three cars is quite literally the trim spec. So um, level one, you still get your sat nav and you still get uh, quite a few creature comforts. But in the level two car that I'm in, the creature comforts increase somewhat and you get a reversing camera. Um, bigger wheels and a few other bits and bobs and then level three panoramic roof and a few other bits and pieces so the only thing that changes the performance stays the same the only thing that changes is the trim in terms of the level one two and three i've got three driving modes to play with as normal and then there's range and range brings that single pedal feel they like to call it where you get a lot of braking by just lifting off the throttle and that gives you regen, it puts some power back into the batteries. But it's still debatable as to whether that actually gives you a longer range. Because of course, every time you lift off and slow down straight away, you've got to accelerate back up again and, and use some of that power you put back into the battery. But it's, it's more a question of feel, how you like it to be. Do you like one pedal where you lift off and it slows right down? Personally not, I like to lift and coast and brake when I want to. But interesting, what I do like with the Fiat, it's got a third mode here, and that's called Sherpa. <laughs> Sherpa, which normally gets you to the top of Mount Everest, shuts down all your air con, all your seat heating you might have, and it won't allow you to use the full 87 kilowatts of power. So it drastically reduces it and tries to help you get to the finish. There's not a huge amount of driving modes in this car. We've got normal and we've got sport and that's it. There's actually no eco mode, which is a bit of a strange one really for an electric car. Now the big thing for me with the Honda is that it's got a real personality. It feels fun, it feels joyful to drive and especially because it's rear wheel drive with that bonkers turning circle, which you saw earlier. It's a really great little car this. I've properly bonded with it. I love the front end. I love the, the, the look of the whole car. This charge yellow is just such a great color for it. I think if it was in a slightly more subtle color, I don't think it'd have the same effect. And it's so punchy. The great thing about electric cars is they just pick up and go straight away. It's a proper nippy 
little city car. The steering response is really great, and the lock. I have to. I mean, I can't. I have to keep coming back to that because the turning circle on this car, it turns on a 50 pence piece. It's just, it's bonkers. I really enjoy this Honda. Out of their natural habitat, these three city cars really impress on the country roads of Somerset. But after a drag race, country drive, and in the case of the Honda, a few skids, we had to think about charging them up. Unfortunately though, things didn't quite go to plan. Now Paul, you brought us to this brand new fast charging stations that offer 100 kilowatts fast charging. And the reason we're here is to demonstrate how they charge at different speeds, which is very important for the cars, because the little Honda can take 100 kilowatts, same as these pumps yep. can give up. But this can only take 50 kilowatts, which is slower to fill up, whereas the Fit takes 85 kilowatts. Unfortunately, <laughs> the 100 kilowatt chargers are only giving out a rather measly 22 kilowatts. 24. 35. That went up to that yeah. 30. Yeah. So they're all going to charge at the same speed now. Yeah. So unfortunately, Honda's great efforts of having 100 kilowatts isn't really going to give them any advantage at all. The infrastructure is improving. It's not quite there yet. No, I think yeah, we all know that. Definitely, I agree. 100%. So um, while they're all charging at the same speed, should we go and have a cup of coffee? You oh. two carry on. I'll sort myself out. Are you upset him? I'm no, he's new to the team. I don't know what's Why does going he get on. coffee with us? I don't know. So Tiff and Paul might think I'm mad by staying in the car while they're going to get a coffee, but little do they know, I have a three pin plug down here, which is bespoke to the Honda E, and I also have my travel kettle. So all I've got to do is wait. Lady boy. Where'd you get that coffee from? I made it. Made it? I made it in the car. <laughs> made it in the I've car? I've got a travel kettle. It's got a three pin plug. A lot easier buying one. <laughs> Tiff, Fiat, what a lovely colour. I know. Walking Funky over looking here. Car. I mean, I, it's the most elegant of the three. Definitely, definitely. The Mini's just the Mini. I mean, I mean, come on, it's the same as the Mini. We've got e-cars. For that Honda, I mean, people rage about it, but it's a big oh, it's square. Great. I love this. I think it, it looks, looks great. It looks like that little robot. What's his name? Uh, Asimo. What, the front definitely. end? Yeah. But the mini, you know, and everything. I think that's quite appealing, the fact that you wouldn't know this is an electric car, other than the grille, which is for yeah. aerodynamics. You wouldn't know. But I guess for people that want an e-car, they're good fun to yes. drive, funky. I'll tell you one thing. I never thought I'd be so excited about a car with a range of 199 <laughs> miles. The feel, <laughs> what a champion that was. Uh, not so bad for that. And in the real yeah. world, they're all a lot less than they say. Yeah, yeah. The, thing, the great thing is with the three of them, they're three very different stylings to shoot different people. So I think they're all fun city cars, but next time I want to test them in a warm city and not a freezing cold airfield. You prefer a, a city over an airfield? Well, I'll have the airfield any day. Anyway, you've got 99%. I'm going to finish my coffee, thanks. You can be on your way. I've got 91%. I'm on 98. We're going to finish That's our enough. coffee. I'm Go going on, home. On it's go. cold. Jeff. Going home. See you, mate. Can you make me one with that three pin? Yeah, do you want, do you want one? <laughs> I love a coffee. Let's do it. I'll have a topper. I can't get the thing out. <laughs> How do I get it out? 